Hello YouTube, this is Beedrew1111, Gamertag Beedrew93, and today I'm going to be doing my review. Better late than never, as they say, and I do. I have already apologised for my lack of content this week. It's been a pretty busy week, but um, as promised, and I, I will try not to be this late in doing so in the future, but I'm doing my review, my thoughts of The Walking Dead Seasons 5, Episode 14, titled Spend. Now, this episode was... Um, in my opinion, yeah, in my opinion, I'd, I'd say it's, it, it didn't feel like a Walking Dead episode. It almost felt like, an, like an, you know, your average zombie movie. Because like, uh, like Chris said to me, because uh, I've spoken to Chris on Facebook since the episode, um, he, and, and he took the words right out of my mouth, it, it, it escalated so quickly, and it, and it was such an explosive episode. Like, on one hand, you had Rick you know, the new police officer in the new community um, looking for somebody who broke, like, a toy owl or something like that. And then on the other hand, you've got some, like, you've got this warehouse, which was, like, a pretty happy job, like, you know, everything going smooth, and then just, boom, out of nowhere, everything just went to crap, and zombies everywhere. It was, it was action-packed. I mean, I thought it was just going to be another pretty chilled-out episode, and, uh, and it turned out to be pretty epic, so um, <clears throat> I will get into it. Uh, there's four things I just want to throw out there before I get into the, the notes I've put down. Um, Gabriel, uh, the priest, is an absolute pansy. I mean, I know he's got his religion and he's got his morals and his, and his own ideals, and I know he hasn't fully agreed with the things that Rick's group have had to do since he joined the, joined the, the ranks, but what a pathetic piece of... what a liability. I, I'd have... Ki I, honestly, if I was Rick and I found, found find out what he'd been saying, um, which I'll get to... Um, oh, I would have killed him. I would have killed him. I think he's an absolute tart. Um, Noah, um, secondly, Noah. Do you know what? I, I am furious that he died. Furious. I'm absolutely gutted. And the fashion, the nature of how he died was terrible. What what a great character. I, I saw a, I saw potentially a good season or two more with him. I thought he was a brilliant character. I'm really gutted he died. Um... Yeah, well, uh, third point, things escalated quickly, um, it's fair to say. It went from being the most smoothest, chilling, pretty calm, cool episode you'll probably ever watch to just absolute, whoa, nut, nut, nutty, crazy crap. But then again, it is The Walking Dead, isn't it? So we should have expected that. Um, oh, um, and uh, um, Aiden's mate, Nicholas, is an absolute coward. Um, oh, we will get to that, but what an absolute fart he is as well. I mean, I thought Eugene was bad, but in fairness, Eugene stepped up to the plate in this episode, and you had Nicholas, who claims to be this hoof, you know, this, like, amazing guy who can scavenge and do this, do that. Him and Aiden had, like, you know, balls of steel two episodes ago, you know, thinking they were the, the main men, and they both were nothing. Uh, but to get into it, um, I just want to make a point of saying that Daryl is finally clean. I mean, he, he looked all, like, clean, no mud anywhere. He was freshly clothed. His hair looked dry for once. It didn't look greasy. Um, he, you didn't see him for that much in this episode. He pretty much just drove off on the motorbike. Um, right, yeah, Noah asks to speak to Diana's husband and basically just asks him if he can learn architecture, like, to... Ki uh, and this is what I mean, that's why I'm gutted Noah's dead. I, 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 I was so unexpected, it was so unexpected, um, I'll never ever get used to how unpredictable this show is, but he basically was talking about, like, how he wants to be an architect, learn how to build things, prepare for the future, and this guy, Diana's husband, the one who built the wall, um, was going to teach him everything he knew. Um, but yeah, like that's my point. You just never expect. You never know who's going to die next. It could be the. It, you could be the most unlikely character. I seriously wasn't expecting Noah to die, especially after that. I thought that was going to be the start of a new story story arc, but obviously not. Um, yeah, Eugene is a bit of a fat, to be honest. In this episode, he doesn't want to go on this supply run, even though. The, he's the only person that knows what they're looking for. It's like this bit of hardware. It looks like a hard drive of some kind. Um, but he doesn't want to come. He's too scared to use a pistol. He's claiming he's, he, you know, he's basically saying, I'm a coward, I don't want to go. Um, yeah, that they're leaving. Aiden blasts music in the van, which I think was quite funny. I mean, it's not ideal, obviously. I mean, it's probably attracting every walker for the next mile. But still, um, Glenn says, oh, um, at least it'll... Um, 
attract the zombies away from the the Alexandria when they drive off. So uh, that was quite clever in a way, stupid and clever. Um, yeah, uh, Rick speaks to Jesse um, about the, her broken owl sculpture. Um, this for me just kind of shows just how bored Rick is. I mean, it, I, I honestly can't see it being much longer now before Rick starts, you know, lashing out. I don't know. It, it, you surely to God can't just go back to normal like that. I mean, like I've said in like my last review, I think, you know, two minutes ago they were... They were, like, you know, living out the, living out there in the open. They were in the wild. They were fight, fending for their lives. All this madness, and now all of a sudden, he's like this police officer who's looking into the the destruction of this little art piece. You know, this owl sculpture, and it's like, oh, I don't know. I just think it's mad. It's like, how could you f just forget that there's zombies everywhere? How could you just be that plain? Um, it, I doubt this will last. He's a, he, he'll be bored. I know I'd be bored. Um. Right, the 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 Glenn, uh, Terra, Nicholas, Aiden, and Noah. They've they and uh, Eugene have turned up outside of the warehouse. Um, Glenn makes a point of saying we should check all the exits, but Nicholas is like, "Oh no, we don't need to do that." But Aiden actually agrees with Glenn, and uh, and I reckon this shows Aiden slowly but surely starting to get a bit of respect for Glenn. Um, I think that punch in the face has done Aiden a lot of good, and um, obviously um, Glenn is. Um, is obviously look is more you know in Aiden's better books now, but obviously Aiden knows that Glenn knows what he's doing, so he's listening. So they check the perimeter, and with that said, uh, Glenn and Noah discover the front of the building is overrun, so there's no um, other exit, and um, and Noah and Glenn seem to be getting along really well. Um, Glenn and Noah are like really really tight, like really really close at this point. Um, the last few episodes you can see that they've been developing their friendship and, and you can tell they're really close because they're having a crack, uh, having a good laugh while they're on the perimeter. And um, yeah, they have become really close. Um, they end up, go they go into the warehouse. You know, well, this is, what I mean. it, it, this is what I mean by escalated quickly. They go into the warehouse, the zombies are, all the zombies that are in that warehouse are all trapped behind this fence. So, you think, so they've caught a break at this point. And um, they get caught. Aiden compliments them, saying like, "You really know what you're doing." You got Eugene. He finds the bit of machinery that he needs like straight away. And and you know, as it, you know, as I've got it written down, it, everything was going so smoothly, so snappy. They could have been in and out of there in seconds. Um, everything was going to plan, but of course, it's The Walking Dead. And uh, and to top that off, I've got this written there. With that, with that said, Aiden is an absolute tool. I mean, why he has absolutely no business in scavenging. He has not got the head for it. He's an absolute tool. And the reason I say that is because a walker approaches him from behind, and he's in riot gear. And from the moment the light sort of hit that walker, I saw the grenades on his chest. I'm not sure if there was one or two. There was, well, I could see the one definitely. And I and, and I even said before anything, I was like, "Stop shooting him! Stop shooting him!" Stop shooting him. <laughs> I was like trying to get through to Aiden, but he wasn't listening to me. Um, but yeah, basically, as you can, um, as you probably know, Aiden was shooting this walker's chest and ended up clipping the grenade on it and blow, bo boom, blown up. Half the warehouse is bloody destroyed. And um, with that, Aiden is impaled on some spikes, presumed dead. And Terra's been launched halfway across the warehouse, probably hit her head on a wall, and she's got like bad hair and um, bad she's been hit head on her head really badly bleeding out um doo -doo 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 -doo. sorry two seconds oh yeah uh, with that said and um, they take terror into this office close the door behind them there's walkers everywhere the walkers that were trapped in that cage have been freed now the explosion opened up the gate so what was in my opinion a pretty pretty s smooth easy supply run like or at least would have been has turned into like a really big blood like a massacre it's already just screwed up completely and it just and this goes to show the difference in the people because you have glenn um because at this point um n um aiden um Aiden starts making noise like he was presumed dead he was on he was he's still in the warehouse now like impaled on these spikes obviously flew back from the explosion and um, so they, they weren't worrying about him, they thought he was dead, but then from while they're attending to um, ter Terra, 
um, you can hear him moaning. He's obviously woken up. I think one of the spikes was coming out of his shoulder. One was coming out of like his hip. So he, he, he was. It wasn't critical. He was just stuck. And um, and this goes to show the difference in the people because you have Glenn who's like, right, we got to get him. And I mean, Glenn probably doesn't even like Aiden that much, but still, straight away he's like, we got to get him. And then you have Nicholas, who's meant to be Aiden's friend, who's like. Oh, I swear he said something like, let's just leave him. Or like, he implies that. Noah's like, what, you expect us to just leave him? So it just goes to show, like, like Aiden and Nicholas absolutely should not be scavenging at all. They clearly just don't have the stomach for it. The second things go sideways, they just want to tuck tail and run. It's quite pathetic, really. I mean, I mean, nobody, I mean... Nobody knows what they'd actually be like in a zombie apocalypse situation. I mean, it's it's likely it, it's never going to happen, so we'll never know how any of us would actually react. But me, the way I am, the way I, at least the way I think I am, I, I I'd like to think that I wouldn't just run away at, this, at any sign of trouble, especially if a friend, I'm you know supposed to be my friend, is in danger. But you know these people are pathetic. Um, Right, um, while this is going on, Abraham is working in the construction gate, his job is in the con is in construction. He's, um, and there's a boss, there's a few of them, they're all working. And um, basically a herd of walkers pass through. And the boss of the workers basically craps himself and says, Everyone, get in the vans, get in the vans, let's go, let's go. Even though one of the girls, her name was Francine, who was working the construction, had fallen down uh, from a pretty high height and uh, hurt her leg and the zombies were going to eat her. Um, Abraham just goes nuts and just basically he's the only one out of all the men there. Again, these people, this Alexandria, they, they do need Rick's group. Every member of Rick's group has outshined every single person in that Alexandria so far. They're just not battle ready. They have no clue what they're doing. And again, just like Nicholas, the first sign of trouble, run, run, run. Bloody hell, there were so many of them, they all had guns, and Abraham was the only one that went to save Francine. But yeah, he ran up and, and he takes on about 50 walkers by himself. It was pretty cool, a pretty cool scene, probably one of the most exciting scenes I've seen. Because uh, Abraham is such a cool character, probably one of my favourites. I think the way... I think the way he just comes across, he just doesn't care. He doesn't take anything too seriously, and he has fun with it. You can tell he enjoys it, and it's just imp it's just wicked wicked to see, really. Um, right, back to the warehouse, we have Eugene. He steps up to the plate big time this episode. Considering two minutes ago he was like claiming like how pathetic I am, I can't do this, I can't do that, he really did quite step up to the plate. Um, ends up carrying te Terra. Is it Terra or Terra? Let's just say Terra. <laughs> he carries Terra out on his shoulder and, use, and uses the pistol to like take out some walkers. Basically carries her out of the exit and puts her and to take her into the van uh, while Glenn and Noah are sorting out you, um, uh, Aiden. And um, yeah, and I thought that was a pretty good character development for Eugene because I, like, I, I do like Eugene's character. Yeah, he's a bit pathetic. Yeah, he's a bit rough around the edges. He's a bit blunt. I think, I think he, I, I don't know, he comes across quite stupid in some ways. Like, in, yes, he might be, you know, very smart scientifically or whatever, but he, he's definitely a bit, you know, not all there in other ways. Like, even just the way he comes across, he's got no facial expressions. But he did come, he did pull, you know, pulled it out of the bag this episode. And um, it just goes to show that obviously being around Rick's group has given, you know, it made an impression on him, at least to a point where... He's come out on, you know, he's, he's, he, he was quite heroic this episode, to say the least. And it goes to show that the being with Rick's group, seeing how they handle things, it's coming out in him a bit more now. I doubt we're going to see him become the next Abraham or Tyrese or Rick Grimes here, but, you know, at least we now know that he's capable. Um, Glenn and Aiden's friend are trying to pull Aiden from the spikes that, he ha that he's trapped on. <coughs> Aiden's uh, mate, um, Nicholas... Um, runs away once again. What a, he's an absolute fat man. I tell you, I would have, I would have, I would have shot him. Um, I'd have killed him. I would have, um, especially after what he does in a minute. But I'll get to that. But um, what an absolute fat he is. I tell you, he, he even says to Aiden, like, "Sorry, man, I gotta go," and just runs. It's like God grabs your, grab your balls, man. Where it's meant to be your best mate, isn't it? Um, but yeah, um, th there's no hope for Aiden. The walkers are piling in. Noah's trying to keep them back with a pistol, but there is no hope. And um, Aiden even just says to Glenn in his ear, he just says, don't bother, you know, or something like that. It says, um, 
you know, when I told you the other, uh, you know, the episode when he got punched in the face, he basically refers back to that and says, you know, the other, the other day when I told you about the four people that got killed on a supply run, they panicked. It was actually me and Nicholas that panicked. We were the ones that ran away. A lot of running away <laughs> from these Alexandrians. They're, they're, they're not the coolest of people, are they? They're pretty, pretty stupid. Um, but yeah, he basically opens up to Glenn. I think he knows he's going to die, so he just wants to get that off his chest before he dies. And um, pardon the pun, but he opened up <laughs> to Glenn uh, pr uh, mo just moments before he literally gets opened up. Uh, by the zombies and this is what I mean by escalated quick and why this episode went so nuts it the, you had uh, this but but this wasn't even the most gory bit I'll get to the most gory bit uh, this is one of the most goriest things we have seen on the series so far but Aiden is being torn to shreds from the inside he's screaming like to the so loud that at one point his voice just sort of breaks he can't even he can't even speak, and then he just has a little groan, but he's alive. This is going on for about 20 seconds. They're just digging into his chest, about 20 zombies, digging their nails in, biting on his arm, yanking at his guts, and he's still just screaming. It was pretty, pretty rough. Um, duh, 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 duh. Aiden is still alive. Yeah, Aiden's still alive while he's being gutted. Um, back to Abraham. Abraham goes ballistic at the worker. This is after he saves the girl and kills about 50 zombies by himself. Um, he goes nuts on the boss and basically says, this is what you people do. This is like the nature of your... This Is, is this what you do to a fellow companion? You just leave them behind? And, um, and uh, the, one of the guys proposes that they all start fresh the next day because of the zombies and stuff. And Abraham's like, no. Ends up taking leadership and just saying, no. You know, we're not stupid, we're all men here, including Francine, we're all, we're all, you know, we're all adults, we all know how to protect ourselves, let's grow a pair, let's bloody keep working. He even says, I'm loving his one-liners by the way, but he even says, now get the cobwebs out of your asses, let's get, a, let's get back to work. Um, yeah, and that, and that, then the construction boss himself actually goes back to Deanna, um, Deanna's office and talks about giving Abraham the leadership, like the, the jet, like actually giving him the title of leader for the construction workers because of his, just the way he carries himself. And I think that's a wicked idea. I think the way he proved himself and it was um, a very, and I think he deserves it. And they obviously feel safer working in those environments with Abraham around. Um, we go, we're, we're, you know, another scene now, we have Carol talking to Jesse's son, Sam, and basically she knows, um, she basically finds out, without him saying outright, that he and his mum are getting beaten by by the dad, Pete, I think his name is. Um, like, um, Sam doesn't outright say this, but Carol isn't stupid. She got, her and her daughter got beat by her husband, um, you know, previous to the, the Walking Dead, like, you know, zombies and stuff. Um, and she knows the signs, she knows the telltale signs, and she basically finds out that he's being beaten, so that's pretty interesting. Uh, not that I agree with it, <laughs> but uh, it's pretty interesting, like just a bit of story twister. Um, we go back to Glenn. Right, now this is where it gets really interesting. Glenn and Noah and Nicholas basically are trapped. There's these, this, these rotating doors with four compartments, and you have Noah and Glenn in one compartment, and then opposite to that compartment is Nicholas. And on either, uh, on the both sides of these compartments now, you have zombies everywhere, and they're trapped. And um, Nicholas selfishly, um, Glenn and Noah are like a calm as day, like trying to keep their cool, because that's just how they are, they're good at it. And they basically say to uh, Nicholas, like, keep calm, chill out, let's just hold the doors while Glenn knocks the window through and then he'll knock your window through and you can both go out the front and uh, we can we can all be we can all escape all be fine and we know one has to get hurt but then Nicholas selfishly barges his end of the door and is like squeezing through this gap like this big trying to push it open to get himself out um, basically before or before this just before this Eugene comes round with the van blasting the music to like lure the zombies away from the front. So they have an escape plan. Glenn has said, I'm gonna knock the window through, then I'll knock your window through, and we can leave. No one has to get hurt. All you and Noah have to do is hold the doors. And Noah's cool with that, but Nicholas, you can tell he's crapping himself. All he wants to do is run away, as we've gathered already. 
And um, yeah, Nick, it's Nicola selfishly barges through so he can escape. And in his escape, leaves Noah wide open to all the zombies inside the warehouse. And it, it, this is, it was really gutting. I was really, really gutted. But yeah, Noah like inevitably gets pulled out of the uh, pulled out of the rotating doors. And when I say that that bit with Aiden was gory, this was beyond. Noah quite literally. When I say gets ripped, to, when I say get ripped apart, like the, the phrase ripped apart gets thrown around. He literally gets ripped apart. His his they grip his mouth and tear it all off. His eye gets gouged. His arm gets pulled off. He's getting bit. All pre pressed up against this glass, by the way, so Glenn can see his like. Well, I'd say he was his best mate at this point. Just getting absolutely torn to shreds, and it was the most harrowing thing I've seen on The Walking Dead so far. I think to date, I, I to date, I was literally just like. I, I was really gutted. Noah was becoming one of my more favourable characters. I loved how everyone warmed to him straight away. The relationship he had with Tara, with Glenn, with Maggie. He was he was in the fold. He was well thought of. And I liked his character. And I was liking where it was going. I thought, oh, wicked. He's going to learn how to build the walls and learn how to do this. And he's going to be an asset to the community. And, how to get... and then Nicholas gets him killed. I was absolutely gutted. I know if I was Glenn, I wouldn't have just knocked him out. I'd have been stepping on his face and punching him repeatedly and feet and I'd have I'd have like slapped him woke him up and chucked him to the walkers to be ripped apart himself in my eyes I just think if you if you screw up you I, I know if it was me if you got one of my mates killed if you were selfish if you turned your back on us like I, I would I would have no faith in you I would be like I wouldn't want you I wouldn't want to be in the trenches with you that's for sure um but yeah Noah gets ripped apart literally um yeah, I'll never ever get used to the unpredictability of this show, if that's a word, unpredictability. Um, that, and Noah's death was absolutely, like, absolutely the point I'm making here. Like, talk about unpredictable, I would just, I'll just never get used to it. But that's what I love about The Walking Dead. You cannot be comfortable. I mean, Rick could die next episode, the main character. There's no saying who will die and when, and that proved it for me. Um, yeah, we're coming to the end now. Um, basically, just to end the episode, we have Gabriel saying to Deanna that Rick's group are not good people. They can't be trusted. Now, him, if I was Rick and I found out he'd said that, I'd have, I'd, I'd snap his neck. Um, I just think that's so rude. Um, like, they took you in, they protected you, they fed you, they kept you safe. What more could you want? Yeah, they had to kill some people. Yeah, they had to do a few things. Yeah, they had to kill some dogs and eat, but it was survival, I, I mean, pull your head out of your ass, priest boy, I mean, I know you're religious and you like to believe that the world is still full of light and hope and, and we should all ha still have our humanity, uh, pr praise Jesus, all that stuff, which is fine, but don't expect other people, it's like, the world has completely changed, there's zombies everywhere, for God's sake, and you're saying that they're bad people, Again, a liability. If it was me, I'd have just left him in the church. He, he was a fat then, anyway. I wouldn't have wanted him in my group. Um, yeah, just to end it, Carol basically tells Jess. Uh, um, Carol tells Rick about Jesse's husband, basically explaining that Rick has to kill him. Um, but <laughs> that's the thing. He, she basically says that the only thing you can do is kill him. Like he's not going to stop. You know what happened with me, and 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 you know, it's not going to stop. And uh, yeah, I doubt Rick really needed much convincing because it's because because he all he held, he wanted to hold up a gun to him the other day. He obviously likes Jesse a lot, and um, and yeah, so I reckon we could possibly see Rick, um, if not killing him, then like maiming him in front of the whole town in some way, maybe. I don't know, beating him up or something, but it's going to be cool. I, I'm looking forward. This is becoming one of the best seasons I've ever seen. I just hope the finale is amazing. I can't wait to do a review for the finale. We've got, we've got one more episode now and then the finale, but I can't wait for this. We've already been told that we've got to bring our Kleenex tissues for the finale. And, um, and yeah, and, uh, yeah, that's about it, guys. Um, I haven't got much for, more for you. I've given you my notes. I've given you my thoughts. It was a fantastic episode. Went from pretty calm and cool to one of the more epic episodes I've seen in a while. 
um, just escalated so much. Um, I know I, I'm looking forward to seeing what Glenn does in the next episode. And, and Deanna, for that matter, because she's already cast out people. So I reckon maybe they're going to cast out Nicholas if Glenn don't kill him, because I know I would want to kill him. Because obviously, he would ran out on Aiden for one, that's Deanna's son, and then he ran out and got Noah killed. You know, he can't stick around, he's a liability and he's a threat to the rest of the people. Nobody can trust him. I know I couldn't. Uh, but yeah, that's all I got for you. Again, guys, I do apologise. I very much do apologise for how late this review has gone out, but it will not happen again. I will try and have my review for the next episode, episode 15, out by Tuesday, Tuesday tops, because I'll probably watch it Monday evening after work, and then, um, and then I'll do my review, and it'll probably upload, probably upload early hours of Tuesday morning, or I'll do it Tuesday night. But, uh, but yeah, thank you for watching, guys. I do appreciate it. Uh, more videos will be on the way. And um, and thank you, thank you for being patient. I know I said before, like my channel has been a bit quiet this week, hence why this review's um, gone out so late. But um, I'm getting my bearings, I'm getting used to my new job, and I'm gonna be getting back back to my more frequent video, at least a few videos a week, you know, minimum. So uh, so thank you very much for watching, guys. That's my Walking Dead review. Take care and uh, tune in for the next one. Cheers, guys. Bye bye.